to offer forgiveness of sin. So would you stand with us? And we're going to sing enough. All of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all i count for you is more than enough you're my supply my breath of life still more awesome than i know you're my reward worth living for still more awesome than i know and all of you is more than enough for all that we for every thirst and every need, you satisfy me with your love. No, I can't for you, it's more than enough. You're my sacrifice, you're my sacrifice, a great surprise. Still more awesome than I know. You're my coming king. You are everything. Still more awesome than I know. And all of you is more than enough for all of me. For every thirst and every need. You satisfy me with your love. And all I have in you is more than enough. More than all I want, more than all. more than enough for me, more than all I know, more than all I can say, you are more than enough, and all of you is more than enough for all of me, for every thirst and every need. You satisfy me with your love, and all I can with you is more than enough. All right, you guys did awesome. Thanks for singing. You can be seated. And Liz and Megan, let's give it up. Here they come. Hey, 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 good morning, River Bluff family. It is so good to see you all here. For those of you that are joining us at home, it's good to see you there as well. And today's a great day to have a great day, right? It's good, it's good, it's good. Um, hey, something we do here every Sunday, it's looking a little different right now, but we're still gonna do it. Something we do here every Sunday is joined together to cheer for our kids. So if you would join me in cheering for our amazing kiddos. Waking up knowing there's a reason. That's probably been oh, one of the downfalls about coming back to church is that we miss Eric Cardwell and his celebration of River Bluff Kids. So I apologize that it's not as much fun up here with <laughs> Megan and me. Uh, but kids, we're excited that you are here. And if you did not see Miss Megan or myself for your Sunday surprise, uh, you can come out there and find us because we have a little something 
for you. A couple more announcements for you guys today. We have July 11th, like things are starting back up. It's so fun. July 11th, right here at 6 p.m., we are having, we are hosting the Soul Quench Auction. And there's going to be all kinds of amazing things that you probably didn't know you needed, but you probably do. And so you should come and check them out. And then the proceeds are going to go towards um, supporting the deeper two-day youth event. We had to come up with a plan B for our youth this summer for camp. And so they are doing this super amazing, joining with some other youth groups, deeper two-day event. And so all the proceeds will go to support our youth in that. So please join us July 11th at 6 p.m. And then also, guys, we're so excited because we are going to have VBS this summer. Woo! Yes. And we're going to do something a little different. And uh, Megan and I are actually really, really excited about it. We are going to host a family-style VBS. Uh, the evenings of July 19th through the 21st will be here from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And we're inviting families, bring a picnic basket, bring a picnic blanket, and we're going to hang out on the lawn. We're going to have dinner um, out there, and we're going to have VBS family style. So parents, you get to hang out with your kiddos, learn some great things. We're going to do activities, games, crafts, just like we do in VBS. And it should be a really, really good time. So the sign-up is out here at the Connect Center. There is also a sign-up online, correct, Miss Megan? There's also, the link is there on our website. So you can sign up there so we know how many to expect. And as always, let us know if you have any questions. All right. <laughs> We're so glad you guys are here today. I'm Megan Cardwell, and I am going to lead us in our life passages. Um, the first one we're going to do is from Psalm 89, 14, and it says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Psalm 89, 14. And the next one's from John 10, 10, where Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10, 10. And with that, we're going to pass it over to Mr. Randy. Uh, good morning. Um, over the last year, Pastor Scott has been doing foundations of our faith. And as a result, I've been uh, thinking about that and talked with him. And, and for the rest of the year, I'm going to do these little homilies that I do on uh, foundations of giving. And so we're going to see that over the next year. They'll roughly coordinate with the pastor's um, uh, sermons. Now, over the last weeks, I've been encouraged and also intrigued by the slides that the pastor has put up. Because one of them, uh, they show they, they shows, uh, the, the result of placing your foundation on the solid rock, which is Jesus, or on sand, which is nothing. Now, no longer in the Ozarks do we build our homes on sand, unless uh, you could say we do because we build on uncompacted uh, gravel and clay, and then we wonder why our foundations crack. But that's a different story. But I've been intrigued by one of the slides that he shows, which shows a stem wall that has been formed up, ready to have concrete placed in it. You've seen that. Uh, and, and I wonder this, and this is uh, this morning, if you will turn to Second Chronicles chapter 27, that'll be my text. I wonder if the person's dreams will be actuated by what is being built there. Has the money all been spent? Has the best money been spent already? Uh, and the house is not even built. So I, so I was intrigued by that. And then while I was doing my daily Bible study, I found uh, the, the passages I'm gonna share with you in the story out of 2 Chronicles chapter 27. So today's message is not upon giving, but upon how do you spend your money. In 2 Chronicles 27, it says, this is the account of Jotham. That's in English. I think it's probably Jotham or something like that in Yiddish. But, Yiddish. but moreover, he, Jotham, built cities in the hill country of Judea, and he built fortresses and towers on the wooded hills. 
He fought also with the kings of the Ammonites. In verse 6 it says, So Joseph became mighty because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. Now this impressed me because he spent money to protect his borders and protect his people and because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. He fought against those that would enslave his people. But verse 6 says, but his personal foundation was indicated in verse 6. So Jotham became mighty because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. He ordered his ways. That means he put his plans before the Lord. He looked to the Lord, the Lord for his affirmation. He looked there first. He laid it all out as if God was watching him which he was. Now this is contrasted with his son. In 2 Chronicles 28, verse 1, Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. In verse 5, Therefore the Lord his God gave him into the hand of the king of Syria, who defeated him. Now, Ahaz's personal foundation and, and its consequence was found in verse 19. For the Lord humbled Judah because of Ahaz, the king of Judah. For he had made Judah act sinfully and had been very unfaithful to the Lord. I come to you this morning as a broken-hearted father. Um, so I'm going to ask each of you parents, what are you spending your money on? What are you spending your best dollar on? Are you spending your money on fortresses and towers to build the protection, the spiritual protection necessary for your families? Or are you spending it on sand and on your idols? Today, we have been informed by the word. The ushers can come and I'll pray over the offering. Father in heaven, I come to you today and I ask, ask you, Father, to uh, let the words that we've heard today sink deep into our heart. And let this, Father, then when we stumble across a, a sidewalk that is sunken or see a broken foundation, that we would think about the right money to spend. That which we spend and where we put our effort and we put our emphasis upon you and the Lord our God and take our ways to you, our Lord and submit ourselves to your leading. I pray, Father, you would build the foundations of these families here strong, that they would, that they would guard the hearts of their children. Protecting them and uh, guarding the frontiers of their family. Pray, Father, over this offering that we might receive it and use it uh, for your will and for your good pleasure in this place. For we know that all things, all the monies that we have have been given by you, by your hand, by the abilities you've given us to even glorify your name. For it's in Jesus I pray, amen. continue to sing. Would you stand up with us? We're going to sing about how marvelous our God is and how amazing it is to stand in his presence and know that he is the creator of all things. And that even though the world seems more uncertain perhaps than it ever has, our God has a plan. And in the end, all of the things that are wrong, that are unjust, that are unfair, for those that our selfish harm and take from those who are without, those things will be made right. So we'll celebrate that truth today. 
He call his bones to love Call his lungs to sing once again I will praise Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Silence here, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Sing Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence me, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. In your name is light, let the shadows get denied. In your name cannot be overcome. your name. Is alive forever lifted out. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name, oh, your name is alive. If the shadows get denied, your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive forever lifted out. Your name cannot be overcome. Sing Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. It's silent here. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence me, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 in your name is light. The shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, your forever lifted up. Your name cannot be overcome. One more time, your name. Your name's alive. Your name is alive. That the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive forever with you. Your name cannot be overcome. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence here. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus.
solutions of this world, as a human race, we seem unable to fix even one simple problem. And so, Lord, we come to you today humble and broken, acknowledging that it is the sin in our lives and the sin in this world that keeps us from allowing the paradise that you set forth for us to live in. And Lord, we come ready not not just to say that we're sorry or to say that we were wrong, but to turn away. Lord, I know there are many that can hear this prayer today and they have never placed their faith in you. They have never made a decision to follow you, to surrender every single thing in their life. And so today, Lord, I pray for them. God, I pray that your spirit which is beyond perception, which is beyond reasoning, which is beyond empiricism and all science, Lord. But in our heart of hearts, when you speak, we know that it is something powerful, something greater than who we are, something more knowledgeable and able than we could ever be. And so today, Lord, we pray that your voice would fill this place. And as we sing and as we listen to your word, God, I pray that you would just anoint, Pastor, that he would speak your truths with boldness and that he would be unwavering today, Lord. That he would be unwilling to compromise, unwilling to bow down or to submit to this world, Lord. 
but that he, as he faithfully has for decades upon decades, would preach your truths today. Lord, give us ears to hear and eyes to see what you have in this coming year and this coming decade. Lord, give us strength. Let us stand up under the pressure and under the power of the enemy, under the, the difficult circumstances and the, the uncertainties and the fear, Lord, that comes from the enemy. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining with us in worship. I know that was a long time to stand. You may be seated. Amen. Man, what a great worship this morning. Wasn't that good? That was so incredible. I think we just love being together and back together to sing together and to have our voices blend together. <clears throat> hey, Jody McLeod, when he stood up that day, he really wasn't sure he was going to do it or not. He waited all the way to the last minute before he decided, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to speak it and say it. Jody is a principal in, um, in uh, Tennessee, and uh, he was getting ready to go up to the microphone at a football game. And, um, well, I'll tell you about his story in a minute, but I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to hear what Jesus said, first of all. Look at this scripture with me, if you would. Luke chapter 6, 46 to 49, we've been talking about the foundations of our faith. We've been talking about what we can stand upon. And we've used this passage every time. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? This is Jesus speaking. He says, everyone who comes to me, hears my words and does them, I will show you what he's like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and it could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. And when the stream broke against it, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. We've said every Sunday, there's just two, two foundations. There's just two to choose from. And if you know the story behind this story, Jesus is just talking to this massive group on this mountainside and his disciples. And what he's about to do is he's about to leave there and walk down in and, 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 and get all mixed up in a whole bunch of people's lives. I mean, he's about to address where people live in everyday life. Excuse me for one second, y'all. <coughs> Excuse me. And so as he's saying to everybody as he leaves, he's just telling them like, hey, everybody, real quick, here's what you need to know. Last thing I'm going to say before we roll up our sleeves and we begin ministry, this public ministry on the way to the cross, is remember what foundations you're building upon. And you have two to choose from. Build one upon the sand or those who come to me here and do what I do and build on the foundation that is strong. We decided at the very beginning of this year, unknown to us, that COVID would take a change, that we would be in the middle of, 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 of this racial um, unrest. We had no idea, but we did know that if you follow after God, there will be storms that take place, and just giving your heart to Him does not mean that you'll not experience difficulties. And so as we look at that, we are welcoming you back to the construction site. That's what we're calling church. This is like a construction site. Just so everybody knows, you can all feel okay about this. Ain't nobody in here perfect, right? And, and, and all of us have some stuff and junk in our lives and all that. So you're in, good, you're in a good place. You're among friends. But it's a construction site to try to begin to continue to work on that foundation. However, this morning, we're going to change it up just a little bit. Instead of talking about foundations of our faith, I'm going to invite you to open your Bibles and I'm going to ask you if you would consider this morning building upon the building your story on the foundations of faith. If you're around River Bluff very long, you will know that we say this quite often. What do we say? Know a name and know a story. Knowing this, that you can know a name and, and know a story, to know either one of those two sometimes leaves you judging what's going on, just the appearance that you can see what somebody's wearing, but when you know a name and you know their story, we've determined that you can, you can flat love somebody. It kind of explains sometimes behavior and what's going on. And so this morning, we're going to talk about something that every person in here brought with them. And what is that? It's your story. 
You've got one. You brought one. And so as we are meeting this morning, we're going to talk about the foundations of your story and my story. I want you to know that there's a lot of stories up for grabs in our day and age right now. The narratives are changing. I don't know if you saw this, but this morning now, it's probably going to become, um, it's a strong possibility they're going to change the John Wayne International Airport. Got to take his name away because of the story of the past. You'll see that every statue is at risk right now. Columbus is really getting it, man. Have you seen how many times they've torn down the Christopher Columbus's uh, statues? There's a statement being made, the defunding of the police. That is huge. And so you don't need anyone to tell you, not a preacher or anybody, just to say, man, seriously, things are messed up. I mean, things are pretty messed up. There's a lot of stories out there, and we're being confronted Actually, it's by design, but I want you to know one story that concerns me the most. And that is that this week, this broke, Sean King, he's a writer for the Washington Times, came out and said that Jesus' images are a form of white supremacy that must go. They should all come down. Now, what, I, what, what concerns me is, all of it concerns me, everything concerns me. I hate what's happening for the racial injustice. I hate it. I hate what's happening. You all know that we are a law enforcement church. We have many in law enforcement in, 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 in our church right now. I see them discouraged, and I see our brothers and sisters discouraged, black and white. I see that. But I want you to know that as a pastor, I believe there's a bigger thing going on. I believe it's more, and it's bigger than just the police and just race and just injustice. I believe that what's happening in our country is actually a direct attack that is eventually going to be on the local church, the people, the followers of Christ. And so it doesn't surprise me when someone says, we're going to have to take, take the crosses out of, out of uh, churches. And I just got to tell you, as long as we're alive, that won't happen at River Bluff Fellowship. It just can't. But what I want to say that will keep that from happening really has much to do with every single one of us and what you did bring. You see, you brought a story that speaks loud and clear if you've got a story in a faith, in, in faith. Everybody's got a story. I want you to know, though, that I just read this whole thing, How to Change a Narrative. It's a guide for activists and peace builders. When I read it, it was a little bit different than for peace builders. It didn't sometimes appear that way but there is a true push to change the narrative and i understand injustice and that all of that but to change the story and what it reminded me of is this that everybody's trying to change a story to fit best for them and i want to suggest this morning that it's time that you and i learn to tell our story very clearly as we do that, I want to say this morning, your story really does matter. Your story matters. It matters. In the scripture, 1 John chapter 5, I'd love for you to open it if you would. And I want you to know that, oh, that little sweet girl's here again. She may want to play drums, won't she? Hey, were you all here last week? If you weren't here last week, that sweet little girl, watch those drum sets. How old is she, Paul? She's three years old. The whole service she did awesome, sat right there and walked around, but towards the end, she just walked right up here, walked straight to the drum cage, put her face against the, and Mark Baker was playing back there. Then she went behind there, and I thought she was going back by the curtains, Paul. <laughs> she wasn't going there. I mean, she, she jumped up and was in that drum cage with Mark Baker. Mark Baker handed her a drumstick. Did you see what she did? I think she was, she was, uh trying out for the worship team, and she did awesome. It was so good. Yeah, our church clapped. Yeah, she's clapping right now. You know what's great is she's got, she's got a drum set at home. Before she got that drum set, she would sit in the kitchen and hit pots and pans and play the drums, and so she was watching those drums. I tell you, I love a church that a little girl can walk up on a stage and play the drums if she wants to. Don't you love it? It's where people live. That's what church is about. 
But our story has got to be clear. And in this scripture, 1 John chapter 5, the scripture begins to talk about your story and my story. And so here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to challenge you in a couple of ways. I'd like to speak to those today who don't have a story as it relates to the person of Jesus Christ. And if that's you, that's all right. I mean, you, maybe you don't have a story with them or a history. <clears throat> I hope today will be a great day for you that you would meet him. But I also want to speak to the church. And those are those folks that look like us, that are veterans, that we do know him. We've heard the old, old story. And we know the story. But it could be that you're like a lot of us, is that we've heard the story so many times that you're fixing to fall asleep right this second at River Bluff Fellowship and be tired because it's so old. Here's the challenge. Is that you would consider, in a world that's trying to get their story out, that you would tell your story if you've got one. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 6, <coughs> excuse me, the scripture talks about the testimony. Listen to what it says. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies. I want you to pay close attention to how many times it talks about testimony and testifying. It testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three, three the, I'm sorry, for there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree, if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he is born concerning his son. Whoever believes in the son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony. See, it keeps coming up. That God is born concerning his son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son and whoever has the son has the life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have the life. So as you look at all of that quickly, here's my three challenges. You ready for this? Number one, get the story straight. Number two, make the story your own. And number three, share the story with confidence. Let me show you what the Bible says. The Bible says that you can get the story straight. You've heard the old saying, this is my story and I'm sticking to it. Or if you've ever talked to your mom when you're like, and you even practice going in, I got to get my story straight right now because I'm going to have to repeat this. Generally, stories, you can make them sound and do anything you want until they've been tested. When they're tested is when your story sometimes begins to break down. Anyone that's ever tried to lie to your mom knows how under some investigation, they know. She knows. She's going to say it. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. But when you start being under investigation, I want you to know that as we're talking about a relationship with the living God, the king of the universe, the creator of the world, that there is a testimony that you can trust and a story that you can believe based on a God that is honest and truthful. Let me show you what I mean. If you decided today that you would desire a story of your own with that maker, your father in heaven, here's what you can count on. This is he who came by water and blood, the Jesus, Jesus Christ, by water, but by water and the blood, and the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. Listen, this will make more sense to anyone here that is doubting God and you're not really sure about him. Like the, 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 the judge is still out. You're not quite sure about if you can trust him with your life. I love the Bible says, I'm giving you three very clear testimonies that you can trust. Look what they are. One is water, one is blood, and one is the Spirit. Do you realize what God is doing? He's trying to make it easier for you to do what may be hard for you, to trust Him. He says, look, he who came by water and by blood, someone needs to go. You can nod in your heart, be going like, is that weird? 
I mean, does that sound weird to you? I got to tell you, it does sound weird a little bit, that that's his testimony. Until you break it down, look what the scripture says. In Mark chapter 1, remember when Jesus is, is uh, baptized? He's getting baptized, and then all of a sudden, this massive, huge voice says, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Oh, my goodness. That's God speaking. And Jesus wasn't the only one that heard it. Others heard it as well. The blood, John 1, chapter 7, verse 7 says, the blood of Jesus cleanses all sin. It's his, it's his testifying and testimony to say, God called me his son. You can count on that. But I died to forgive you of your sins. And the, the, the neat thing about that is if we ask you for your testimony, some would say, yeah, I do know that. I, I do know that. My biggest question when I came to know Christ was, could he forgive me? Do you remember my story? I'm in Freddie Dorm and my RA's talking to me. I'd never heard this before. And he said, a savior died 2,000 years ago, can forgive you of all of your sins. I promise you, I asked him three times. I said, hang on a second. Let me just ask him in this Bible study with these other guys. And I go, hey, just a second, man. Let me ask you this quick question. So you're saying that a guy dying 2,000 years ago has anything to do with me and I can be forgiven? Yep. Okay, just a second. So you're saying, and these other guys are like, uh, they were, they'd already been in Sunday school and been in church their whole life. And so they, were, they had all the answers. But, but it was new to me. And I said, I can be forgiven. And I began to qualify it. For everything? Yeah. Okay, so you're saying, I did just like that. You're saying that I could be forgiven for my sin and my past. And even, and I didn't say it, but I knew what I was thinking. Even that, yep. And then the joke is, I always, and I did say this. I said, give me some of that. I'll take some. I'll take it right now. I'll take it. What I meant was, I, I would love to know a Savior, and I accepted him. And you know what he did? He forgave me. I remember the peace that came after that, to know I was forgiven. Jesus said, I have testified through my relationship with God openly in front of you by dying and shedding blood. But lastly, he says this, and by the spirit, the one who testifies truth, he says that I'm the truth, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And so get the story straight. If you've not yet began your story with the Lord Jesus, today could be the day that you get your story straight. I mean, actually, you go to the source of a God that is perfect and you can know him. But secondly, not only get the story straight, that you would make the story yours. Have you ever heard anybody that tried to tell a story that they weren't really there? Or they tried to claim the story? Or sometimes we will change the narrative and we will say the story differently. Like I said, and then they said, and then I said. And you ever notice how many times we, we try to just make ourselves look better? Like I, I told them, man, I, just, I told them. Really? I did. I said, I said this, and I corrected it. And, I, and I, I told them how it was going to be. And I got to tell you, sometimes it's made up in our heads that we really didn't do it that way. And so what's so neat about the Lord Jesus is, is that it can be your own story. Can I suggest to you that if the Lord Jesus is not your own story and it's somebody else's, you stand a very good chance to be angry at the church and mad and grumpy when you get here. Have you ever seen, I mean, not at our church, no one, but have you ever been in a church where people came grumpy? I mean, not here. I know a church, I have a friend who's in a church where people come and they're just mad. They're just grumpy. Generally, I would know as a youth pastor, which kid is here that doesn't want to be here. I've told you that lots of times. We'd have 70 kids at, at our youth chapel. And I can tell you which kid's here, whose mom made them come. I mean, it's painful. I would even tell him, dude, it's painful for me too. I know it's hard that you've got to be here. Just give us about a few minutes and, and we'll go. It's funny, Sam Arthur's one of those. You know him, Jonathan. Sam Arthur's now on staff at Second Baptist. He told me one time, he said, like, man, listen, I'm out of here. I go, really? What do you mean? He goes, I'm out. I'm going to um, go live on the wild side a little bit. I go, seriously? He goes, yep. I go, what are you going to do? He goes, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to go party. I go, just getting started today on that? He's like, yep, I'm starting. I'm a partier. Dude, I'm not kidding. He did. He'll tell you the story. 
I said, hey, will you do me a favor? We're in the, steer, in the stairwell at First Baptist there. I'll never forget this. I said, man, seriously, all right. I said, hey, tell me this. Do you know how to get back here when you're ready? He goes, yeah. I said, how do you get back? He said, um, I ask Christ for forgiveness. I come back. And I, I mean, he had all the answers. And I was like, let's hug, dude. We hugged. And he was gone. About a year later, he's back. And he's like, hey. I go, how's it going? And he, he tells his story that, well, he's on staff at Second today. I'm so proud of him. But the story became his, and it can become yours. Anything less than it being yours, you'll be frustrated at mom or grandma or husband or wife or somebody that's making you come or making you listen. And listen, you want to you get over being angry? Meet the Savior and make him your own. And the story is this. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. And so if you're here still trying to figure out your own story and trusting in mankind, know this, the Savior says, my story is greater than men. And for this is the testimony of God that he is born concerning his son, that whoever believes in the son of God has the testimony in himself, which means there's an invitation for you to know your own story. Stop living off everybody else's coattails. You want to know an exciting story? Give your heart. It's why Jesus said, I can't, but you might have life, might have it abundantly. But the enemy will lie to you. What's his, what's his goal? To kill and destroy. And so he says, whoever believes has him. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he's not believed in the testimony that God has born concerning his son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. I'm going to share something about that as we in just a moment. But the last thing is to share your story with confidence. Look what the Bible says. The testimony is this, that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son of, has the life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have the life. Please understand this, that the scripture is not saying some are going to live forever and some are not going to live forever. Actually, what this means is we're all going to live forever. But those who know him have eternal life in his presence. Those who do not know him still have eternal life, but in eternal punishment for the rejection of the very son that God said, I came to give you that you could know me. For me, it's a no-brainer. I'm like, hey, somebody who's talking to me about peace and forgiveness and somebody who's here to steal my lunch money, mess with my head and relationships, I'll take Jesus. And so what he's saying is you can know the confidence of that. Can I tell you what's so special about that verse? I got to read it to Nancy Good in her ear Friday night. We were talking about this very verse. She had seen her face. She went like this. She just smiled. Do you know what really the whole, the whole crux of everything is? Everybody's looking for life. And everybody's trying to find it. That's why this is so important, is that the Lord Jesus is speaking life into a crazy, crazy world. And we can share it with confidence if we know him. I want to tell you what the confidence you can have. Is not only does your heart want it, but based on Ecclesiastes, every single person you know, every person you know, has built in them a desire to know if there's something more than this. Eternity has been put in the hearts of all of us to ask questions. So now all the way back to where we started. On the culture thing, listen, everybody and their brother's got a story. And some story is I'm fixing to bust the window out at, at Walgreens. I'm so mad. I am so angry. I'm going to throw the, oh, Chris Shanks, sorry. Where is Chris? He's on security. He's out there. He manages Walgreens. That just came off the top of my head. We're not, do not bust out Walgreens window today. <laughs> oh, good. He's security out there right now. Don't tell him I said it. Anyway, though, you see where people are trying to make a statement. I want to tell you this morning. That the Bible says that those of us that know the old, old story, listen to what it says. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And then this is to us. Let the redeemed of the Lord say something. Say so. Say so. Say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble. Do you have a story? It matters. Let me read this story. Jody McLeod couldn't decide if he was going to do this or not, but he decided to do it anyway. It's pretty bold, I'll just tell you. But I think it speaks of the need for you and me to step, step up. He's a high school principal in Tennessee. He stepped up to the microphone and he, and he said this. I don't know if, sure if I should make this statement, but I'm going to say it anyway. He stepped to the microphone on September 1st at a football game and he said this. It has always been the custom of Roan County High School football games to say a prayer and play the national anthem to honor God and country. But due to a recent ruling by the Supreme Court, I am told that saying a prayer is a violation of federal law. As I understand the law at this time, I can use this public facility to approve of sexual perversion and call it an alter uh, alternative lifestyle. And if someone's offended, that's okay. I can use it to condone sexual promiscuity by dispensing condoms and calling it safe sex. And if someone is offended, that's okay. I can even use this public facility to present the merits of killing an unborn baby as a viable means of birth control. And if someone is offended, that's no problem. I can designate a school day as Earth Day and involve the students in activities of religiously worship and praise of the goddess Mother Earth and call it ecology. I can use literature, videos, and presentations in the classroom that depict people with strong traditional Christian convictions as simple-minded and arrogant and call it enlightenment. However, if anyone uses this facility to honor God or ask him to bless this event with safety and good sportsmanship, federal case law is violated. Jonathan, you guys come up. We're going to spin right now. This appears to be at best inconsistent and worst diabolical. Apparently, we can be tolerant of everything and everyone except God and his commandments. Nevertheless, as a school principal, I frequently ask staff and students to abide by rules which they do not necessarily agree. For me to do otherwise would be at best inconsistent, at worst hypocritical. I suffer from the affliction enough of unintentionality. I certainly do not need to add any intentional transgression. For this reason, he said, I will render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and I will refrain from praying at this time. However, if you feel inspired to honor and praise and thank God and to ask him in the name of Jesus to bless this event, please feel free to do so. As far as I know, that's not against the law yet. Don't you love that? Yeah. I, when, I, when I read that, I was like, that is, you know, it's maybe against the law, and somebody may bust in someday and say we're taking your Christian flag or whatever. But you know what's not against the law, and not even, the Supreme Court of the land can't take away from you? Your ability to speak to the King of Kings, the Supreme God over all of it, to know him and to give him your heart and to ask him to come in, you can still pray. I'm going to invite you to stand and we are going to pray. Would you stand with me? With your heads bowed, I'm going to invite you that if today, and I want to ask you, if you don't mind, with your heads bowed, could I just ask you, I'm just going to ask you boldly, what's your story? Really, what's your story? What is your story? Not just what you do for a living and where you go and your friends and how much money you got in the bank or don't have or whatever. What's your story as it relates to the Father? Please know this. The greatest story ever told was the story of the Lord Jesus, the Father sending him, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him 
should not perish but have everlasting life. It's the greatest story ever. For someone, that's good music. That's good sound to your ears. If that's you and you don't have a story, could I invite you with your heads bowed just to simply say, Lord Jesus, I love your story. I'm thankful for your story. And I believe your story. And today, I want to follow you. I would like to ask that you would begin that story in my life. I do that by saying I've tried to build my own story and I have failed and blown it. God, I've sinned against you. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sin and take control of my life. Begin to live your story through me. I give you my heart. If that's you this morning with your heads bowed, you can know that Jesus on his promise would come in. But could I just real gently nudge the person next to you? It could be that you are a veteran and you have heard the story so many times it's become old to you. I want to suggest, my friends, in this crazy world, never, never, never has there been a time more important that your story matters, <clears throat> that you would share it. If you're one of those Christians, kind of like me sometimes when I forget the importance of it, you'd like to make a commitment today to tell the old, old story. Man, nobody's, somebody's searching for it around you. Would you bow your heads as you bow and ask him, Lord Jesus, would you restore to me the joy of that story? God, would you help me to live it out? Would you help me to share it with confidence based not on my ability, but on your testifying, your testimony through the blood, through the water, and through your spirit? Lord Jesus, would you stir River Buff Fellowship? Let our story be loud and clear, one of peace and one that loves you, but warriors that will not back down. Lord, I pray that you would do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you sing, Jonathan? Let's, let's sing together. Would you give us would you give us one more minute one more minute we want to share with you all that after a really hard battle Nancy Good passed away I shared with you in that scripture uh, that night she died early Saturday morning and uh I started to say she lost her battle to cancer. Man, she didn't, she like, she like whipped it and just, it was victory. The whole time I said, Nancy, are you, Mike asked her, hey, are, are you ready to go home? She smiled the entire time. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. She smiled. We'd talk, read scripture, she'd smile. And so she passed away. I wanted to share with you that. There will be a, a private, just a private for right now, a service on Friday just for their family. But we're going to kick it open for a big one for all of us to be able to come back and celebrate a little bit 
farther down into the summer. So you all can be remembering them. And then the very same night as we were sitting there by Nancy's bed, we were talking about Mike's mom, 103 years old in nine months. I'm going with 104. He said she, uh, she'd had an infection about a month ago. And man, we prayed for her. She lives in Kansas. And uh, that night, early in the evening of that night, uh, she passed away as well. And so Mike and the Goods are not only grieving uh, Nancy's loss, but the loss of his wonderful, she's the most wonderful, wonderful lady. Never seen. Here's what was neat about it, though, is at 104, she said, please just let me die before any of my kids do. And so she actually, like, got a jump on Nancy and beat her to heaven only by hours. But we celebrate that. I speak lightly of it, but so good. So would you all remember? And then Liz, if you would share something special about. Absolutely. Um, well, good family, we love you dearly. And um, it is an honor to come alongside you in this. And so as a church family, we have been invited to um, help the good family they have sponsored two homes in Eden Village, which for those of you that um, are unfamiliar with Eden Village, it's an amazing, amazing um, organization. They have, it's a tiny home community for uh, homeless people, for the chronically homeless people. And so um, they have, the Good Family has sponsored two homes, Wheatland Cottage, which is named after Nancy's parents because they grew up in Wheatland, Kansas. And then Nancy's Nest, which is obviously um, in honor of our Nancy Good. And both of those homes, the registries have been fully and completely covered. So already, which is huge, which is huge. And, um, and so then Nancy, she, that wasn't enough. And so um, for... Um, her last memorial here, she wanted to sponsor and to open up the Eden Village 2 Community Center. And so this is just exactly what it says. It's a big building there in the middle of Eden Village 2. It's a community center where all of the residents can come and join together and be in community, which that's, that's it. That's the church. That is, that is who we are. And um, I love this. And so right now, the Good Family is raising funds for that. So you can donate in honor of Nancy Good to that. And the link will be on our website. The link is on our River Bluff Oasis page. We'll get it out on all of our uh, means of social media there. You can always ask um, Becca Rose. She's going to be out here in the lobby She's been collecting the goods uh, for Nancy's Nest in the registry. And so she'll be out here after church. She'll be here next Sunday too. Uh, she's been Dr. Mike Good's go-to through all of this. And so Becca, thank you so much for all of that. And uh, she'll be out there if you have any questions. And let's just love the Good family like crazy and let's uh, help them in raising funds for the community center. Thank you. Hey, aren't you glad you came today? Glad you came to church. Let's, let's dismiss your story matters. Go tell your story. Go tell your story. See ya. Have a great week.